Golf Central on YouTube, brought to you by the Epic Speed Driver from Callaway. Hello, I'm Cara Banks, welcoming you into Golf Central on YouTube. We are pleased to be live and on site at the Waste Management Phoenix Open this week. And today, well, we witnessed a duo put up a pair of 63s to share the 18-hole lead. It was his best ever score for Mark Hubbard and tied a career low for Matthew Neesmith. Let's hear from the co-leaders. They've been amazing. Scott and Kevin have both been extremely, extremely knowledgeable, and they've been helping me kind of navigate golf courses, where to stay, where to eat, kind of places to, to stay, and even at home, working on shots, trying to trying to pick their brains on, on what they do great, and, and and they've been out here a long time. They're, they're amazing veterans out here, so they've been, they've taken me under their wing a little bit and really showed me the ropes. They've been grateful. I'm very grateful for it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I, I worked on it a little. I haven't done much of the the snail, but uh, we were joking on 16 that if I had I had hit it to you know a tap in's length, that uh, I would have had to have done it. Um, it it drew a little more at the end, so I had five feet, and it was kind of outside that that range. But uh, who knows? We might break it out this week. Yeah, the, the snail could be could be in play. Yeah, I mean, it's it's you know ideally. You know, a tap in on 16 or a tap in with like a two shot lead on 18 for the win. Those would be two pretty good situations to break it out. So maybe we will see the snail at TVC Scottsdale this weekend. But what about the world number four making his fourth straight start in this event? Well, it was a five under 66 for Xander Schauffele despite two bogeys on his card. Let's hear from the X-Man. I think I just as I got older, I sort of deal with situations better um, on the course and um, you know, I, I feel like I'm, I am in a good place. I just need to really stay patient, you know, and not really try and force things. I'm trying to get back to my sort of uh, lower expectations um, kind of attitude for my rookie year. I, I think that's sort of how I rattle off wins. And with a little more experience now in certain situations, I can kind of combine the two. And, and that's what I'm trying to do. And, you know, we'll see if, if that works. We're trying everything, you know what I mean? It, so you, you believe that you have gotten in your own way, as they say in sports psychology realms? Yeah, absolutely. You know, you just you get hungry and um, everyone around you starts winning and you just want to join the bunch and all you want to do is win and you kind of forget about the, the nitty gritty and the small things on, on your way and, and the ladder to winning. So I'm um, just trying to work on the small stuff. You know, I'm, I'm in that boat of chasing. You know, I, I haven't really won and, um, you know, my world ranking's gone up and you know, I am playing more consistent golf, but I, I'm still not doing what I want to do. And um, I guess it's a good thing. It keeps me hungry and keeps me humble. But um, yeah, the ultimate goal is winning, and you know it, it kind of just dangles right in front of you every tournament, and you just try your best. And uh, I've knocked on the door a few times and, and kind of messed up and, and choked, I guess, if you would want to call it that. But I'm um, just trying to learn from, from every moment. Well, Zander is one of five players in the top ten in the official World Golf Ranking who are in the field this week. Two others played together today. The world number two, John Rahm, three under par, along with the world number three, Justin Thomas. Harris English, already a winner on the PGA Tour this year, struggled a little with the one over 72 today. But John Rahm, not only the highest ranked player in the field, also a product of Arizona State. Ah, uh, you know, that, that, that bogey just makes it feel so much worse than it really is, right? And, to be honest, I was four under bogey for eight through 17 with had a ha without having my best. I mean, I scrambled early on pretty good, made that long putt and one for bonus. And the front nine, I made it two under and it could have been a lot worse. You know, back nine, I played a little bit better. You know, I could have maybe made a putt on 13 for eagle. That would have been better. Maybe if I put it in dry land on 15, who knows? But still, you know, great up and down on 16, two putt on 17, just too bad on 18. You know, that, that first putt was slow and then the second one, I live here enough to know the valley pool is a thing and, you know, played it there and it's just, it just wasn't there. But overall, you know, with what's by far not my A game, it was a pretty good round. Tell me about that 53-footer uh, on the first hole. Nice bonus there at the beginning of the round. Yeah, things did not start well. I mean, that tee shot is just a four iron, put it in place. It was just downwind off the left. A fader of the ball is good. Completely blocked it in the rough, got a good lie. Flyer nine iron, I'm, you know, felt like a million miles from the hole and first putt you hit all day you have that putt uh, I've hit it before just got to trust it you know uh, pick a line and trust it and I did and it went in I mean it's it's that simple it's it's a complete bonus I would have taken it far by far not that many people out here but there were at least there was at least a crowd not what you're used to at this event uh, just 
what was it like out there with some fans but not the normal? It's fun. You know, it's great to actually have feedback when you hit a shot on the green. Um, we've had none of that for a while, and sometimes you don't know if you're 30 feet or 3 feet, right? So it's nice to have that feedback. It's, it's nice to to hear the fans cheering for you and, uh, you know, the, the very few boos and 16 that you have because it's not nearly as much as it usually is, right? So a uh, lot of fun. We miss the fans. I've missed the fans. Uh, and even though it's a very small percentage of what they usually have here, it feels like a lot just because we haven't seen them in a while. Well, someone who has experienced the cheers here before, Brooks Koepka in 2015 when he won the Waste Management Phoenix Open, but this year enters off three straight missed cuts for the first time in his career. A 3 under 68 today, though, has put him in position once again, so let's find out what BK felt he did so well. I feel like I've been doing the same things I've been doing. Um, you know, I've putted a little better, made a few changes in that, and it's it's working. I'm hitting it really well. Um, you know, just hit a toe ball on two and I ended up in the worst place possible. But uh, just got to clean up those, like, silly mistakes, the three putt. Um, you know, on 17, the ball probably just had a little bit of water on it, so I didn't have any spin, any checkup on it. But, you know, that that happens. But uh, got to avoid the three putt and the double. I'm still confident. Uh, no, no, no difference. Um, I feel like I've been playing pretty good for a while. I just haven't scored well. And, you know, there's some... Sometimes we're scoring just isn't there, uh, but I feel like I'm just hitting it the same, so I'm pleased. So round one in the books, and we will look forward to our second round coverage. That begins at 3 p.m. Eastern time right here on Golf Channel on Friday with coverage all afternoon beforehand. We will see you then from day two in the desert.